Huh, there's a new game I keep seeing my friends rant about online and how they can't stop thinking about it. Like, what the hell is this picture? This is Eternum, the island in Amazon Gaming Studios' new hit, New World. Let's dive in and give a quick overview of the things you can do in this soon-to-launch MMO. You start your journey joyously sailing across the world in the 17th century. Something awry happens as it begins to storm and rocks with an attitude show up to ruin your day. After impossibly surviving this harrowing experience, you go through a tutorial and learn the ins and outs of combat with a nifty little cinematic that Amazon Gaming Studios seems to milk as much as they can. But don't milk a cow. You'll get banned. Bessie? Am I milking her? What? It's not even spelled correctly. That's right, Bessie. Drop that ban hammer. Like every MMO, the goal of New World is to level up. There are three things to waste hours upon hours upon hours leveling, each a different aspect of the game. You got your weapons, your crafting skills, and your character level. Your main level is the general level that tells people how much they can trash talk you if they beat you in a duel. Be mindful as this goes up you lose your beginner privileges. The more you play, the more you level. New zones are unlocked when you level up your character. Simple as that. Like your character level, you level up your weapons. This is called weapon mastery. No longer will you need to create 1000 alts just for them to be forgotten and deleted in the login screen. You know who you are, you monster. To level up a weapon, pick it up and use it to kill things. That's it. But boom you gain weapon mastery. Choose new skills and their skill trees. The gimmick here is finding what two weapons combo with each other and which talents to pick as you increase the weapon mastery. Think World of Warcraft talent points, but for weapons. The last thing to level is your crafting skills. There is an orangutan dick million amount of crafting skills to choose from. 17. There, there, there's 17 of them. These are also split up between gathering, refining, and crafting. Most of these skills piggyback off each other. To save time, the best thing to do is get your gathering skills maxed as you level and then craft when necessary. Crafting is a big part of the game. You will have to level these skills as you progress through the story, including crafting your end game legendaries. Don't treat them like your laundry and leave them sitting for weeks on end. To make it go quicker, check your map. It tells you which zones all the common resources are located. Iron, fibers, etc. Didn't know that? Look at your damn menu! Now I'd be an inconsiderate, idiotic, idolizing fool if I didn't talk about territories. What are territories? Simple. They are zones with some color. Specifically yellow, green, or purple. Now, if you're worried about PvP in a known territory, you don't have to. Just turn off your PvP in a settlement, or at a fast travel shrine. It's a toggle. Side tip, there are also fast travel shrines. Find them in zones to zip zip around some more. Factions can own territories by buying them or winning a war against the owning faction. This comes with some perks for the faction and even more for the company that owns it. However, this doesn't stop you from traversing their land against their permission. You get a choice between three factions, the Righteous Covenant, the Nerdy Syndicate, and the Disgusting Marauders. This is important because companies require members to pledge allegiance to the same colored flag. All hail Skycloth. Don't worry, this is mainly for PvP purposes. Of course, there's a bunch more to this game. We didn't go into builds, metas, or min-maxing. That's not the purpose of this video. This was just a quick guide from a closed beta player to get you started and hyped for launch. Smash that subscribe button if you can't wait to purge the unclean masses. Fuck the Marauders, join the Covenant!